Dr. Tracy Bullard here. I wanted to chat with you a bit about metamorphosis and how this relates to us and our own evolution. Now, most people, when they think of metamorphosis, they're thinking about butterflies and, and you know the caterpillar turning into the butterfly or, or the moth. Um, but this process of metamorphosis also can be related to our own journey of transformation. Now, when a caterpillar is going into the process of metamorphosis, first of all, they are living most of their life just as a caterpillar in that form where they're earthbound, they're crawling along the ground, they're eating off of the leaves, they're getting fat upon the resources that the earth provides them. But at some point, this little timer goes off in that uh, caterpillar's DNA, and it gets really sleepy and sluggish and realizes that it needs to go and take a nap. So it then goes and finds itself a nice little leaf, and it spins itself into a chrysalis. It actually becomes the chrysalis, which is pretty fascinating. Um, and inside that chrysalis, the caterpillar form actually breaks down. It becomes like this soupy, mess where if you were to open up that chrysalis in the midst of its metamorphosis process all you would find is is a goo you would find no structure of anything that looks like a caterpillar and so it'd just be this soupy mess so in this process it is like literally all of the cells all of the structure of that caterpillar are breaking down now i like to compare this caterpillar to the old paradigm way of life whether it's our own old paradigm way of life or our societal old way of life, you know, the, this old, old structure, this old paradigm that really is, is a thing of the past. If you think about how life was, was uh, running in our society 20 to 30 years ago, and you compare that to today, I mean, we didn't even have hardly the internet back then. And now look how much our society has changed because of this shifting into what we can call a new paradigm. Um, and so our society has been like, the old paradigm is like the caterpillar that spun itself into this chrysalis and it's trying to emerge into a new paradigm way of life. And yet in the process of that metamorphosis, there's a struggle that starts to happen inside the chrysalis. Now this struggle is between the old cells that formed the caterpillar structure and the new cells. Uh, that are trying to form the structure of a butterfly. Uh, so, or we could say the new paradigm. Now, in the, um, in the process of metamorphosis of the caterpillar and the butterfly, they call these new cells imaginal cells. And these imaginal cells hold within them a new sort of instruction that the DNA is putting out. So the DNA is really at the core of all of this because in the caterpillar, the DNA for the butterfly was already there. Right? It's all there. It's just a, a new expression. Some new codes were turned on inside of that DNA. And that is when it then decided it needed to go through, or it didn't really think it needed to go through. It just went through, biologically went through this process of spinning up that chrysalis. So inside the caterpillar, the old cells are dying, you know, or, or its old structure is, is coming into this soupy mess. It's breaking down. And the new cells are starting to come in. These imaginal cells are coming in. But the old system thinks that the new cells are invaders. So the struggle begins when the old cells start to attack the imaginal cells. They think that this is a virus or some kind of invader and that that is the reason why the old system is breaking down, why it's dying. And so it goes into this survival uh, process where it's trying to fight for its survival. And so the old cells are attacking the imaginal cells. Um, but the DNA continues to pump out these imaginal cells. And so the, this structure will turn into the butterfly, whether the old cells like it or not, because that is the DNA code that is coming through. And so at some point, these imaginal cells, they keep coming and they start finding strength in numbers. They start to unite together. And in that bonding together, um, in finding each other and collaborating, they become stronger and they're able to defend or, or not become so um, you know, impervious or, or so susceptible to the uh, attack of the old cells. 
So as they gain strength in numbers, they can they also realize that okay, we can now start to specify ourselves. At first they're almost more like a stem cell, you know, it can be universal, it can do anything. But then as it starts to um, start building the structure, it becomes more specified. Like one cell can become the color of the wing, another cell can be, you know, start to work and form the antenna. Um, it, you know, so there's all these new forms that we need to build for that butterfly structure, that new paradigm structure to come into full fruition. So these imaginal cells start to diversify. And as we continue through many stages, um, first there's the diversifying, then there's, okay, now how do we coordinate all of this together? And then, um, you know, the old cells are starting to realize that, okay, well, whatever is going on here with us, it's not working. Like we are, we're dying and it's, it's, we don't really have a choice here because this old structure is falling apart. But over there in that imaginal cell camp, something's working over there because we're starting to see this new structure emerging. So then the old cells have a choice. They can choose to repurpose themselves and join on to the new structure that is being built by the imaginal cells. Or their other choice is they can become obsolete and die off. So, for example, an old digestive cell of the caterpillar can still be a digestive cell of the butterfly. It just needs to find a new position within the new structure uh, and decide to work with them rather than working against them. Uh, so at some point, several, uh, many, many of the old cells start to repurpose. They start to gain uh, this new sense of security in this new system that's working. And then there are other cells that die off. So as this dying off goes on, at some point, the, the butterfly emerges, it's fully built, its structure is there within the chrysalis, and then the next stage comes where it's time for it to break out of the chrysalis. You know, that it starts to become big enough that, that the chrysalis is, is gonna crack open at some point, and then the light is gonna start coming in. And as the chrysalis starts to bro break open, the next stage is that that butterfly actually has to struggle its way out of the chrysalis. It has to work and, and kind of get, get, you know, push its way out, moving from the darkness of the chrysalis towards the light. And if you were to go in there and try to, like, if you felt really sorry for this butterfly that's struggling to get out of its chrysalis and you tried to open it up more and support it and help it out, do you know what would happen? It wouldn't be able to fly that butterfly would have a very short uh, life and it would also just, it wouldn't be able to fly. It wouldn't be able to do what it's here to do. So nature is telling us right there that it has to struggle out of the chrysalis. It has to be a process because what happens in that struggle out of the chrysalis is that the wings of the butterfly are being strengthened. They're being made more resilient. And only through that struggle can the butterfly then take flight. And this is, some of what we're going through right now. We have to go through this struggle so that we can also take flight in this new paradigm way of life on earth that we're trying to create right now. There's still this struggle happening inside the chrysalis and yet that light is going to start coming in because there's a lot of new forms, a lot of new paradigm ways of being that are emerging. The structure is becoming more visible and now it's time to push through out of the darkness back towards the light again. Uh, and we have to push together. We have to really work at it and realize that there will still be this struggle. There will still be those who want to cling to the old paradigm, and yet we can't let that stop us. Now, once the butterfly has finally fully emerged from the chrysalis, then it still isn't quite ready to take flight. First, it needs a little bit of a rest and it needs to dry off. So all of that goo from the chrysalis needs to kind of dry off and evaporate and that butterfly just needs that rest. Uh, and then once it's rested and it's dried off, it is ready to take flight. And as it takes flight, then it's able to enjoy uh, all the nectar and the flowers and you know all the fruits and so forth that it, it, you know, just the pleasure of the experience of living, but it also brings beauty to the world. It brings a sense of magic and hope and, um, you know, anyone who sees a butterfly flying by is like, oh, look at, look at that, look how beautiful that is. Uh, so this is like us, like this is, we are some of the imaginal cells of humanity that are trying to push towards creating a new paradigm way of life. And this is something that I 
delve deeply into in my book, The Game Changers, Social Alchemists in the 21st Century. Now, I originally published this book in 2012, and I had shown how not only the process of metamorphosis relates to our own evolution as a society, but also how this aligns with alchemy. And there's different stages of transformation that we go through anytime we're trying to go from a, a certain state of being into a better state of being. And so I walk through all those seven stages of transformation. I help show how they align with the, um, the steps of the metamorphosis. And I relate it to what we're going through in our own society, especially in the Western world. But it really applies to our whole world and all of humanity because we are going through this process of awakening within the collective consciousness and emergence into a whole new paradigm way of life. Part of it is driven by technology and part of it is driven by our spiritual desire to awaken. There is a deep desire within the human spirit that wants to become more conscious, more accomplished, more awakened and alive within our gifts and um, our innate potential. And so this is something I talk about in the Game Changers. Now I have updated this book. So there is a special second edition that is now out and this is just my author copy, so it's coming out soon. And um, in the special second edition, I bring it all the way up to date to 2021 so that we can see how we've continued to evolve through these seven stages of transformation and our own metamorphosis to become the butterfly of the human race, so to speak, and uh, emerge into a whole new paradigm way of life. So I hope that you will check it out. Uh, to check it out, go to uh, you can find the links below in the description and also you can go to my bio or my website at TeresaBullard.com.